Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, grade five, module five, lesson 11, homework. So um, some of these uh, lessons in here uh, aren't a lot, they're not real heavy fifth grade standards, they're kind of more sixth grade standards, uh, at least in California with um, area, but we do need to understand how to get volume, which crazy as it is, area is not heavily tested, but volume is. And so we're really just finding the area, which is length times width in fractional units. Uh, the objective is at the bottom of the page and it says right there, finding area of rectangles with mixed by mixed and fraction by fraction side lengths by tiling. This is the tiling right here. Record by drawing and relate to fraction multiplication. It's like fraction multiplication review. So uh, anyway, you should have already done this. Hopefully you already understand the lesson, the concept, and if not, go watch the problem set video and that can help you before you start. Then do the work and now you can check your work against the video. All right, so we have Kristen tiled the following rectangles using square units. Units is just a way of saying, we don't know if it's inches or feet or meters or centimeters. We're not gonna give it a name. We're just gonna call it a unit. So whatever the unit is, it's a unit, okay? Sketch the rectangles and find the areas. Then confirm the area by multiplying. Rectangle A has been sketched for you. And so again, in class, I like to put these up with post-it notes and stick them to the board and then say, if this is one and this is one, then one plus one is two. That's where they're getting the counting from. And then one here this way times the three fourths of a unit this way, then because it, it's hard to see like, is this actually a full square? Like it looks like it is, but they say it's not. They say it's two and three fourths. So anyway, don't you can't really trust your eyes on this as as much as you might like to. Um, this bottom one is only supposed to be a half unit tall. If I was really looking at half, it should be pretty teeny, but see how it, it's a little bit taller. So just go with the measurement so you can do the calculations. So here we have two and three fourths long. And again, I'm gonna go across this way for long and then one and a half down and um, try to be consistent with whatever you do. And we're gonna use our formula for area, which is length times width. So you're gonna take your two and three fourths and multiply it by one and a half in order to get your answer. Now, when you have mixed numbers, you have to turn it into fractions to multiply or take it apart, but we haven't really gotten that far yet. We'll get there really soon. Uh, so we're gonna just change this to an improper fraction. Four times two is eight, nine, 10, 11, over four times two times one is two plus one is three. It's multiplication. We just got out of uh, the module and lessons where we were dividing fractions. That is a whole separate operation when you have division here. Then you do the keep it, change it, flip it, but we don't have that. You can't do that here. Multiplying fractions, it is set and ready to go. You just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom if you can't do cross canceling to simplify. And right now we can't cross cancel because 11 and two don't have a common divisor and neither do four and three. So we just multiply across and multiply across. And now you have a simple division problem, 33 divided by eight. I'm gonna keep going this way so I don't crash into my next problem below. And eight goes into 33 four whole times because four times eight is 32, and there's one left over between 33 and 32, and then eight is our label, remember, that's our denominator, and so our final answer is four and one-eighth units squared. So hopefully um, that makes sense to you. If you wanted to count them up, it says to, to find the area by counting, so one, two, and then this would be a half plus a half would make the three. And then you've got a little bit more than three, so three and three fourths, but then we have almost half, so we get a little bit more than four and a quarter, or a little bit more than four, but less than a quarter. And that's why you get your four and one eighth, and that's your final answer in units squared or square units. So I'm not gonna talk that much on the rest of them. That's just to introduce the whole thing and 
all the stuff we're doing there. Now, what you need to do for rectangle B is you need to draw it. So two and a half units long and three fourths units wide. It's important to know how big to make your tiles because I don't even have a full tile going down. So I'm gonna have a full tile going across. There's one, two, and then a half. So I'm gonna make it a half. But I can't even make a full square because it's only three fourths of a unit across. Okay, so this is going to be two and a half units, or two here, and then the half is here, and then this isn't even one, just three fourths. Okay, so it gave you this. Make the improper fractions so we can multiply using our formula. Four times, sorry, two times two is four plus one is five times three-fourths, already in fraction form. Can you cross-cancel? No. Divide 15 by 8. It's almost 16, so it's almost 2, but it's not. And then we don't have any measurement units, so you just move that on up. 1 and 7 eighths units squared, because these are literally squares. So this is not quite one, and this is not quite one. Three-fourths plus three-fourths, think of 75 cents plus 75 cents. If you have to put it in the vending machine for a soda, that's $1.50 or one and a half. We're a little bit more than that, so we're a little bit more than one and a half. One and four-eighths would be the half, but we have a little bit more than that, so it makes sense. All right, rectangle C, three and one third units long and two and a half units wide. So I do get to make full squares this time. One, two, <laughs> that's a terrible square. Three and a third. Okay, so three and a third. And then two and a half. So we're gonna have two full squares, two rows right here. We still need the third on this second row, but this last row across, we only are gonna be using the half. So what does that look like? Well, it's kind of a short. You can make it maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's all the way across evenly, but you get this funny little piece in the corner. But that's kind of where we're, we're able to count these and say, well, this is one and this is one and one and one, 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 but then we have all these fractional units. That's where we start counting by less than one. So label the sides three and a third and two and a half. Use your formula, plug in, change to improper fractions, and hopefully you did all this already. Three times three is nine plus one is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Ah, look to see if you can cross cancel. If you can cross cancel, you should always make things easier for yourself because the multiplying will just get really big. It would be 50 divided by 6, and that's never fun to do. But if you simplify by dividing 10 and 2 by 2, you get a 1 here and a 5 here, and that only makes 25 thirds which is still a division problem, but it's less than 50. So hopefully you know your facts a little bit uh, better with the lower numbers. So three times what gets close to 25? It would be eight. With how many left over? One, because eight times three is 24. And so that would be your answer. And so when you see that you have one, two, three, four, five, six here, and we know we have halves here, that's gonna be the seven seven and a half, seven and a half plus two thirds plus a little fraction. So you're, you're trying to make sense of your answer and that is a sensible answer, eight and one third. All right, back side here, we've got rectangle D, three and a half units long, two and a fourth units wide. So we've got one, two, three and a half. and two and a fourth. So similar to the last one where we have a full row of holes up to here where it's a half. 
But then the fourth is just going to be a skinny little strip here underneath each one until we get to our tiny little fractional unit there. Label two and a fourth on the side if you didn't already. And <clears throat> take these and make them into improper fractions. Two times three is six plus one is seven. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Look to cross cancel. Nothing is going to evenly divide. So we move on into straight across multiplication. Straight across multiplication. Now we have 63 divided by eight. Gosh, if you know your eights, you know that eight times eight is 64, but it will not be eight. It's gonna be seven because we don't have 64. So how many are we uh, almost getting there with? Seven, because one more would give us 64. See what I'm doing there? You can set it up long division if you'd like, but the area is seven and seven eighths units squared. And that's your final answer. Okay, I'm um, going again, one, two, three, four, five, six. The half units, that makes one, so the half plus a half, that's one right there, so seven. And then we have the, the fourths, so seven and three fourths plus a little tiny fractional unit. So makes sense, we're right around the right area. Okay, finally, a square has a perimeter of 25 inches. What is the area of the square? So we talked about connecting perimeter to area, and it's nice when it's a square because a square has certain attributes. It has to have four sides the same length. So when you add up all four sides, you're gonna get 25. So what can you do to figure out the length of one side? You can simply divide 25 by four, and that will give you what one of them is. So 4 divided by, I'm sorry, 25 divided by 4 is what? 6, because 6 times 4 is 24, and there's 1 left over. So can you have fractional units here? Of course you can. And so each side would measure 6 and a fourth, but area is to multiply the length times the width. So that's okay. We can do that now. Not too hard. Now there are two ways you can do this, and I, I know we haven't spent a lot of time breaking things apart. Um, we will get into uh, algebraic multiplication. I just wanna show you a peek at what that's like before we do the improper fractions. Um, to split something apart because it's in multiple pieces, I just need to make sure that I multiply all of the left side against all of the right, or let's say, all of this factor against all of that factor. So I could take it apart and do six times six in a separate equation and six times a fourth. And then I could also, because that's this times this, but what about this little guy? He didn't get multiplied by anything. So I would then take one fourth times the first or the second six which is really a whole number. All these could be in a fraction over one. And then one fourth times one fourth. Now that's one way you can do it. If you have done algebra or if you're used to this or if you've had it before, um, that is where we're gonna kinda go when we do um, some multiplying with other mixed numbers and other units ahead. Okay, so you can split it out like this and solve. But for this one, we're basically all the way through just using the multiplication with improper fractions, which would be four times six is 24 times plus one is 25. And the same thing. And the reason that this is sometimes easier is because your answers, your work is all in low numbers, whereas 25 times 25 is not necessarily a fun and easy problem. Five times five, 25. And we have 10 plus two is 12. And then we have a zero here. Two times five is 10, carry the one. We have four plus one is five. Add. And the top of this is 625. And the bottom still has to be calculated into 16. And so what do you have here? You have a big division problem. Okay, which is fine, it's fine. 
we know how to do that. So you set it up and you do your long division. 16 is really close to 15, which if I was counting to 60, I would say 15, 30, 45, 60, and that would be four of them. But this is one more. Four would be too big. So three it is. Three times six is 18. Three times one is three plus one is four. I need to find the difference between 48 and 62. The difference between 48 and 58 is 10, and then there's only four more, so that's 14. Or you can do the standard algorithm, take one, give 10, etc. Well, we have 14, which is less than 16, so I can bring down my five. I have a really pretty big remainder here, so I'm probably gonna have a nine. Give it a guess, nine times six, 54. Nine times uh, one is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that leaves me with one. So my final answer is the area of the square and it's 39 and 1 16th inches squared. Now you can click subscribe and come back again and I might be able to help you on some other math homework or problem sets or learning in some way and that would be much appreciated. If you want to hang out and watch me solve this one, I will. All right, so 6 times 6 is 36 and we're going to add to that what we do here which is to multiply 6 over 4 but this can be simplified by dividing by 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times. So I end up with three halves. I'm just going to put it in fraction form for now. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing over here. I have six fourths, which can be simplified to three halves. And then I have one sixteenth. Now I can add these because they have the same common denominator for six halves, which then turns into uh, a whole number. Or you can separate it and say one and a half, one and a half, but it's three either way. And then we end up with the 1 16th. And so this here is just, I don't know. I mean, it's easy for me. I see that this is possible here. I also see that a lot of students really like to wrap it up and keep it all together here. And, and they're like, well, it's all calculated here and I don't have to worry about losing track of things. So in the future, this is what it is in like seventh and eighth grade algebra. And in fifth grade, you can definitely keep track of things here. So I hope the video was helpful and we'll see you on another video another time. Goodbye for now.